Thursday, October 31st. Happy Halloween, gang. Happy Threshold Thursday, more accurately, here at the box. We have a, we have a classic one for you today, um, and one that I like very much for a couple very specific reasons that I will get into now. So we have uh, one of the common themes of our sprint days, and that is uh, built-in rest today. So there is a two-minute rest period, and I do want to start this video off just by saying this is one of those days where it is a minimally two minutes of rest periods. And that if that helps you to be able to share a bike with someone, great. Although today we won't, uh, we won't be, uh, we don't need to enforce with any type of seriousness that you absolutely have to use a bike. You can use the rower instead, but only if there aren't any bikes. And I still want some people to share a bike. Okay. I just think that this stimulus works a little bit better with a bike today. But again, I, you know, if there's a huge class, it might not be, it might not be conducive or it might not be, uh, it might not be logical to, to share. So what do we have? It's one of those workouts where we're going to, we're going to say every round is its own sort of score, right? Its own sprint. And at the end of the day, after all six rounds are completed, what I want to write on the whiteboard is your fastest round and your slowest round. Um, and like mentally what I do is subtract those two. Cause I don't want a big, I don't want a big gap between your fastest and your slowest. What I want is, you know, don't manipulate it or game it, but I want naturally for there to be consistency across those rounds. So you got to try to do the same thing from round to round in order to make that happen. What are the movements we have today? Maybe Joe's going to stop barking in a second, but we have, a, we're going to start off with 14 dumbbell snatches some 14 alternating key important word there alternating dumbbell snatches followed by 28 double unders and then lastly a 10 calorie bike for the men or seven calorie bike sprints for the ladies so how do we do this one like what is uh what are some of the key features number one this is a day where we have a skill the skill is double unders built into the workout and so it's also the kind of workout where I want consistency across rounds, but we all know double unders are anything but consistent. And that's part of the challenge today, right? We want, we think 28 is a small enough amount of double unders for those people who are new and working at the skill. And also for people who are old savvy veterans at them to try to work at some form of consistency at that movement. And so another thing is there's no time window that we're looking for specifically today so if you're someone who's like i can do 28 double unders but it's going to take me a little while well you have that time today you have the time right the the cap today is whatever would you know is is when the class is over or the, when the hour is up but i think everybody should be fine so yes some of you are going to do singles right away but others who are going to work at double unders i want you to try to get all 28 every time no matter how many times you hit yourself or how many times you have to break that up. And that's gonna hurt our consistency, but maybe we will find, maybe we will be consistent across rounds, if not perfect at our double unders. Another movement is the alternating dumbbell snatch. And we've said this before, I've said this specifically, that the ability to go unbroken is a skill in and of itself. The ability to transfer the dumbbell from one hand to the next is an important skill to learn particularly with, an, with the open in mind, because that movement almost always comes up anymore in the open, and we want to get really good at it. We, we certainly do the volume of that movement at Chester Springs. Let's also work on the skill and the speed of it as well. 14 is the perfect amount of dumbbell snatches to work on that skill, because everyone who might watch this and everyone who might take class on Thursday or, this, or uh, on Halloween can do that. Uh, and choose a loading that will definitely allow you to go unbroken. And then, in order to make up your fastest uh, round each time, you're going to hop on the bike to finish it off and really sprint through that 10 for the men or 7 for the ladies. It is a non-negotiable sprint. You have to sprint. And uh, it, you know, uh, and you have the numbers, you know, the RPMs or the cal per hour on the, on the bike to let you know if you are being consistent in your effort on that bike. All right, so for me, one of the things that I found was that I could I could hold a 70 to 75 RPM on the bike when I knew I, I knew I had that rest on the other end of things. So I was really gunning it on the bike today. 
And this was one of those days where my first round was the slowest round and I only got better after that. In fact, I mostly went unbroken on my double unders and the one round that I didn't was actually my fastest round because when I tripped up on the double unders, I knew, okay, I, I, that's gonna mess with my consistency. I gotta go even faster on the bike now. And I made up for it. Um, now the fact that I was able to sort of will myself into making up for it tells me that I probably wasn't working hard enough the entire time. And I'm disappointed about that, but it was uh, an important lesson to learn. Hopefully you learn from me watching this. So again, that's all we got for today. How long this wad takes is, it depends, right? It took me a shade under 20 minutes to do the whole workout, but everyone's going to be different depending on your skill with both dumbbell and, and jump rope. All right, enjoy this one. Again, the score on the board is two numbers, your fastest time, your slowest time, and I'm hoping to see some, you know, some, not a huge gap between those two things. Enjoy.